There's murmurs of a Chase shutdown, we have some pretty good transfer promotions, and this might be the end of the chapter for the Goldman Sachs Apple card. This and more in today's Credit Card and Points Roundup. Mandy and I are currently in Las Vegas at the Waldorf Astoria. It's currently 3.38 and we have late checkout via MXFHR at 4 p.m., so we'll see how far we get through this video. Before we dive into everything, big favors to give us a thumbs up to help with the algorithm and consider subscribing if you like following analysis from someone that actually uses these perks and travels. Starting with the big story, there seems to be a growing confusion about a wave of Chase shutdowns. It's a Chase shutdown, but it's also kind of not because the initiator and the person shutting it down doesn't seem to be Chase. It does involve a Chase card though and one of the current promotions. With the Chase Aeroplan card, one of the main benefits is pay yourself back. This lets you redeem Aeroplan points for statement credit to cover travel purchases made with the card. Pay yourself back as a whole isn't new, but the fact that you're using Aeroplan points, points that are generally harder to cash out for these other purchases makes it pretty good. The value here is a solid 1.25 cents per point, so if you have 100,000 points, that's $1,250. The broken part of all of this is that there is no limit for the amount of points you can redeem, at least for 2023. Starting in 2024, you can only redeem 50,000 points per year. Okay, so why does this matter and why is it broken? The Chase Sapphire, Reserve, and Preferred both let you redeem points at elevated value if you book through the travel portal. Some people complain that the portal is more expensive, but I think that is debatable. The stronger argument is flexibility. For the Aeroplan card, it's the travel category as a whole, so anything that codes as travel. On the flip side for Chase, it's specific vendors that work through the Chase travel portal. So for example, for Team Airbnb, this is a pretty good use case of points, and even more so if you're the person paying for the group expenses and people are reimbursing you. If you're the planner for the group, this is a pretty easy way to cash out your points. The only comparable card for cash out purposes is probably the Sapphire Reserve with Pay Yourself Back. So for that card until September 30th of 2023, it's 1.25 cents per point for gas stations, grocery stores, and also annual fees. Okay, so we know that the Aeroplan card in the long term at least only wants to redeem 50,000 points per year, but right now they're fine with everything. Why is this broken? It's the fact that you can actually aggregate a lot of different currencies, so obviously chase ultimate reward points, but also Capital One and American Express. Capital One is only one cent per point. American Express does have travel at one cent per point through their portal, and you can cash out at 1.1 cents per point, but that does require having a Schwab Platinum card. All of these options are a bit worse and have less flexibility outside of maybe American Express. And to be fair, you can get more value for aspirational travel, but that's only if you care about first in business and going to specific destinations. If you're more of an economy or more bespoke type of traveler, then 1.25 is solid. Okay, but why are you recommending this? Isn't this going to lead to a shutdown? Maybe, but I think there is more to the story. I think as long as these are trips that you're 100% taking, you should be fine. Even if you're pulling together a million points and that's way past what they want, as long as they can look into it and they see that it's legitimate, that you're not canceling the trip, I don't think that they're going to push back too hard. My guess is that the shutdowns were related to people that had uncertain travel. So imagine if you and your group of friends might go to a summer trip. You book something that's refundable, you end up using Pay Yourself Back to get a statement credit for all these points, and then you end up canceling the trip. In that case, you're sitting on an overpayment, and if that overpayment's large enough, it probably raises a bunch of flags. I can be completely wrong, but if you're using the program legitimately, you're probably going to get a bunch of eyeballs, but I don't think they're going to shut you down for this. Would love your thoughts down below, though, whether you think there's something more behind the scenes that people are doing, or whether it's a function of just redeeming a lot of points. Next up, we have a great offer for the Chase Inc. Preferred. The old offer was 100,000 points after $15,000 in spend in the first three months. The new offer, which is a lot better, is 100,000 points after $8,000 in spend in the first three months. So almost half the minimum spend requirement, which is pretty awesome. The card does have a $95 annual fee, but you do have access to pay yourself back, as well as transfer partners, to maybe even Aeroplan if you're trying to cash out via that program. One of the other big draws is the optionality. So if you get the card and you don't like it after the first year, so first 12 months, you can downgrade it to the Chase Inc. Cash or Chase Inc. Unlimited, which are both good solid cards. Also both no annual fee cards. If you do anything on the side, whether it's computer repair or maybe fitness coaching or nutrition coaching, that counts as a small business. I think a lot of people are surprised by how broad this is. We did a full video on this on the business channel, Ask Sebi Business, and also a deep dive on the Inc. Preferred if you are interested. Main takeaway, solid card, good intro bonus, and optionality. On that note, if you do want to learn about cards, whether this one or pretty much any other cards out there, and you want to support the channel, we do have links on the website, asksebi.com, and down below in the description box. 
make sure the links are competitive, that the cards make sense for you, but otherwise it is a huge way to support the channel. So thank you guys in advance. Moving into a lightning round, Amazon is offering Prime members a $5 credit when they purchase a $50 e-gift card. Reminder that you do need to activate this in order to get the offer. The promo ends on July 10th or when supplies have been exhausted. The promo credit that you get is valid until August 25th of 2023. I wouldn't be surprised if this runs out fast given that Prime Day is coming up. And if you are interested, I'll put a link down below. Next up, IHG has a pretty good transfer bonus where you're getting 70% bonus points for transferring UR points, Chase Ultimate Reward points until July 31st of 2023. Normally it's one to one, now it's one to 1.7. If you are trying to use this in Bora Bora or the Maltese, make sure that you have availability and that you are planning to book within a day or two of that transfer. Also run the numbers and compare it with the Chase Sapphire Reserve because that might actually get you the same value or more value. It's a huge, your mileage may vary, so be careful and do the math. Over on Capital One, they have a 20% transfer promotion for Flying Blue, so Air France KLM, until July 31st, 2023. Normally, it's 1 to 1, and now it's 1 to 1.2. Flying Blue generally has a gigantic list of promotions every month, so well worth looking into. So for example, right now, if you're trying to fly from Boston to Europe, it's going to be 11,250 points one way, or about 22,500 round trip. This is for economy, but even if you look at the retail prices for economy, for summer at least, it's pretty crazy. The cheapest price I found for Boston to Paris as a filming is late August for about 11,150. So technically, if you can find availability through Flying Blue, then you're getting close to four or five cents per point, and this is just economy. This is a pretty good sweet spot. That's a fold. No, I, I said I call. I know, I understand. If you said it, that's okay. Twelve hours later, and we are back at home. Three nineteen, three twenty a.m. The last topic is going to be American Express and how they're in the running to take over the Apple Card. This also isn't just a random rumor, but an investment bank is working on the deal as we speak. It might fall through; they might sell it to someone else, but there is the process running. Maybe it's to a company like Citi that has had their footprint shrink, or it's back to Barclays, who actually had the original Apple Card and has pretty broad experience underwriting phones and these type of items. At the same time, this is a giant U-turn for Goldman Sachs. So back in October of 2022, they actually renewed their partnership through 2029. Goldman CFO also says that they're pretty tight. So technically, there is still six years in the contract, but they're looking to trade them off. Maybe I've been following the basketball offseason a bit too much, but this feels pretty familiar. Even if you do want to do a trade or sell it off to a different company, you have to kind of act like you're not doing anything to preserve at least some optionality and value. Basically, the moment that it becomes super well known that they are trying to flip it, it becomes a fire sale. So in that sense, a deal isn't intimate or even assured, but talks are happening. Apple would also have to agree with a transfer, and they are aware of the current talks that have been going on for the past few months. If the deal does go to American Express, there are two big considerations, especially if you are a credit card enthusiast. Number one, American Express generally doesn't like people closing cards. In the past year or two, this is how people have ended up in pop-up jail. Pop-up jail is a term that people use for when they apply for a card and they're otherwise approved, but there's a pop-up saying that they can get the card, but without the intro bonus. Amex has been pretty aggressive with this and they're usually focused on unprofitable customers. So people that are closing cards too fast, people that have low spends, and people that have low spends relative to the intro bonuses. So if you're only hitting the minimum spend requirement and then immediately moving on and sock drawing the card, that's a bad sign for them. In this sense, especially if you are worried about this, you might want to close off the Apple card before that deal happens. In the past of a lot of other deals, once it's been confirmed, they don't let you close the card or they don't want to because that affects the valuation. Another big consideration is the four, five, six rule. Most people are limited to either four, five, or six American Express credit cards, and this is both personal and business cards together. For most people, it tends to be five, but some people are at four and some are at six. We have no clue why though. If the Apple card goes to American Express, then you might be forced to close one of these cards in order to actually preserve your optionality and keep either signing up for cards or get cards that add value to you. So for example, let's say you're capped off at five cards and you currently have three Hilton Aspires and one Bonvoy Brilliant. Let's say you leave one spot open just to apply for cards and try new things. In that sense, you end up getting forced to close something and that's not ideal. 
especially for people in the mid game who are still in that process of acquiring stuff, it can affect your system quite a bit and can cost you a few thousand dollars in travel. Okay, so what are my thoughts on all of this and who do I think the Apple card will go to? I don't think Cities in contention because they haven't really moved the needle too much on that side, so let's just take them out. American Express feels like the logical pick because their brands align pretty well. So when I think of American Express, I think of iPhones, I think of Ramoa, Louis Vuitton, Rolex, Patek, and all the other expensive brands. The big question is whether American Express even needs to do this. American Express and Apple are both pretty hard-headed companies, and I could easily see them clashing on a lot of things. American Express also has a history of walking away from deals that don't make sense. Best example of this is Costco, and if it doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. At the same time, the Apple Card hasn't been the most profitable, and the division has included $3 billion in losses in three years. Even last year, they lost $1.2 billion in just nine months. Most of this was due to loan loss provisions, which basically means defaults. American Express can't do this, but it's kind of like introducing a toxic girlfriend or boyfriend in your life. There's going to be a lot of drama. Do you or does American Express need that drama? If it does go to them, I wouldn't be surprised if American Express adds a lot more restrictions and makes it harder to get approved and also get high credit lines. At the same time, it's also a weird pairing because American Express is known for prime and super prime underwriting, while Apple wants to make the card super accessible. So through all of this, even though it's not mentioned, I think a dark horse pick that is in the running would be Capital One. Capital One has been pretty good of acquisitions, and they're happy to shell out money even as of June 2023. And they actually have a history of doing acquisitions from 2018, 2016, and a lot of other deals in between. Of all the big banks, Capital One is the closest to kind of the startup mold where they're moving fast and breaking things, or at least trying to move fast. Basically, they're willing to take the shot, and even if they miss, it's fine. Another huge factor is their expertise. Capital One is the goat of consumer underwriting for subprime. Most big banks like Chase focus on Prime and Super Prime, the exception being Capital One. In fact, Capital One says that 30% of its loans were to customers with FICOs below 660. Goldman with the Apple Card is in a similar range of 28%, while Chase is only at 12%. If you think about it, both Goldman and Capital One are doing the same thing, but one of them is just doing it a lot better. On Apple's end, I think American Express is the better fit for the aesthetic, for the brand equity side of things, but on the business side, Capital One does a pretty good job. But yeah, would love to hear what you guys think. On a note of cards, if you do want to learn about pretty much anything, we do have links on the website, asksabi.com, and down below in the description box. If you made it to this point of video, then leave an Apple emoji in the comments down below, and I'll try to heart it and also respond. My question for you is how do you think this whole Apple thing is going to turn out? And if you were Apple, which would you go with? How would you play this? Bonus question, but let me know which mic you like better. So for this video, I've been mostly using this one, which is a Tascam, compared to this one right now that you're hearing and the one that we've been using for pretty much the last two years. I think some people like this one because it has a bit more presence, but then we actually went to a family friend's house and they put me on the TV for whatever reason. And I guess they had bass boost on and it sounded pretty obscene. Yeah, for whatever reason, if there's bass boost, this sounds a bit too much. Let me and everyone else know what your thoughts are down below in the comments. Big favor, give this a thumbs up, consider subscribing, but otherwise, hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time.